Okay, this is episode 5, I think, chapter 5 of Hourglass, uh, one of our solos. We have a lot of people in this game, so I'm running solos for everyone to get them kind of in the same spot-ish that they can be connected pretty easy. This game is uh, 1944 Earth, obviously, uh, during the Battle of the Bulge, December 22nd, actually. Um, and, uh, of course, this is World War II in Bastogne, Belgium, and this game will focus on Mikey Horvitz. Uh, Mikey Horvitz, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, Mikey Horvitz uh, is just a, a typical uh, kid, a Jewish kid, growing up in the Bronx. He's uh, over here, overseas, missing his... Uh, this is a gal. I believe uh, her name is Grace. And, uh, well, uh, coming overseas to fight the, the Germans was, well, sounded like quite an adventure, but this here, man. This here, I didn't. Well, Mikey didn't, uh, didn't bargain for being in uh, waist deep snow in one of the coldest winters in known history here outside of Bastogne, encircled by Germans. He's, uh, tall kid he's a little lanky but he's got that uh, wiry type of strength that sometimes you see in all the best World War II movies that type of grin determination to get things done and because of that many of the other soldiers in uh, Mikey's outfit they all look up to him you're sitting in your foxholes freezing your asses off for the last few days uh, there are rumors about the uh, Kraut sending a message over to General uh, McGolfey. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and uh, basically demanding the surrender um, of your entire battalion, which is surrounded supposedly by Germany ar German artillery and tanks. The, the American forces are clearly outnumbered and outgunned here but uh, you've been holding this uh, location for some time Corporal Lewis uh, in the foxhole with you looks over and well, what do you think they're going to do? I, I, I don't know man the uh, the commander he's uh, he's got a set on him man he's, he's got a pair uh, I, I, I don't think that uh, they would treat us kindly if we just surrendered, uh, Lewis. I mean, I don't know. Figure out what happens. <sighs> I'd, I'd rather have been a little warmer place than this. I don't, I don't know. It might not be so bad. Oh, <sighs> yeah, there, there's warm and there's, uh, you know, there's warm. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I don't think that the likes of me, they had uh, the treat too. Too kindly, and he he kind of uh, has a necklace with a star David on it um, uh, on his neck, and he takes it out, and kisses it, and tucks it uh, back inside his undershirt. Uh, undershirt is just frozen solid, almost with frost. Maybe, uh, maybe you should. Uh, I don't know, ditch that thing or something. I don't know. Nah, man. This is the only thing that's maybe kept me safe and alive. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to throw this away. I need any any kind of help help I can get. So do you, Lewis. Well, you don't want to end up like uh, uh, Smith from last night. 
Uh, uh, if you got an extra one, I'll wear it if it helps. No, I don't got an extra one. Oh, any jewelry I had, I pawned a couple weeks back. You got, remember I got us that bucket of beer? Oh, yeah. Tastes like shit, man. <laughs> Fucking bottle was frozen before I was half done with it. Oh, you just need to drink quicker. <laughs> yeah, what I would give for a little snort of whiskey now, Lou. Shit. You ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. Oh, uh, I remember England. Uh, remember the war, warm beer? is like, oh, it tastes like piss, but oh, I'd take a warm beer right now. It sounds pretty good. It kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it, Lou? Yeah. Oh, damn. I wish, I wish we could get out of here, Patton. He's get his ass over here with his tanks. Yeah, I don't know much about uh, these generals, but what I know about Pat and his he, uh, he likes to make a grand entrance. So let's just hope that the finale of his campaign here is worth it. He needs to save Arquista. Yeah, get that right. Oh shit, it's cold, and he's just shivering and shaking. Um, yep. A while goes by, and uh, you guys are shooting the shit. Not much is happening, and uh, your uh, lieutenant walks by, and he's, "Hey, you too. Listen up, everybody." Bad right, lieutenant. Uh, got some bad news. Looks like uh, we're laying down our arms. Well, what? Laying down arms. Horvitz uh, takes the cigarette out with frozen fingers and fumbles at a chrome Zippo lighter and <laughs> lights it. Takes another cigarette out for Lewis and hands it to him. Oh. What do you mean, Lieutenant? I don't know. I just got told by HQ. Looks like we're giving up our position. Uh, hard to believe. Horvitz just takes a drag from the cigarette and uh, exhales. And it's so cold, the smoke just kind of layers out over the rim of the foxhole. Anyway, I guess we're supposed to... We're supposed to congregate in town. Uh, symbol. Tomorrow morning, 1600. Or 600, I should say. Boys All got right. that? I got it. Don't know if I like those orders, Lieutenant, but I hear you. Well, Horvitz, I don't like it either. Don't matter what we like, we do what the general says, yeah? Alright. Everything, everything will be alright, don't worry. Yeah. Easy for you to say, man. What are you, Methodist? He just shakes his head. Just, uh... I don't know. If I was you, I'd find, uh... I don't know. Go back to the... The, uh... The med tent and maybe... He points to the your name on your uh, jacket. Maybe switch that out. Or somebody less, uh... You know... Kosher. Yeah, I get your drift, Carpenter. I get your drift. Anyway, I gotta go tell those boys over there. He kind of walks off. Lewis is like, oh man, I told you. Yeah. Gotta tell you, Lewis, I didn't, didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, well, I mean... Can't win them all, I guess. Uh, I don't think they'll treat us too bad. Just if these goddamn skies were clear, they could drop some supplies in or something, but uh, I guess this goddamn winter's not going to ease up anytime soon. Can't win them all. You can't win them all. But in this, this game, losing, man, losing means, it means losing it all. Well, you get my drift. Well, I mean, if we would have stayed here and they would have... Bomb the hell out of us, we'd all be dead, maybe. 
I mean, this way we got a chance. You know, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get sprung by Patton when he comes. Not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. I'll hold on to a little bit of hope there, Lou. I think it'll be all right, man. Just, uh, you going to do what Carpenter said? Head back to the... Head back there, or... Can it just... Yeah. Orders are orders. No, I don't think that was an order, man. He just said, uh... If I was you, I think is how he said it. Yeah. That might not be a bad idea. Like I said. And it's all about survival. And if you read any of the Bible, Lou, you know my people. We're good at surviving. Well, I never was a really a uh, religious fella. Ah, because it's not not true what they say about foxholes in with you, huh? I don't know what do they say about them. They say there's no atheists in foxholes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say I was an atheist. I'm ready to convert. Uh, just convert to something other than Judaism, I'd recommend, Lou. Yeah, I think... It uh, uh, not seems the correct climate to do so. Yeah, I think you're right, man. Uh, well, Lewis is uh, uh, not going to get me uh, taken away from here and uh, shipped off into a cage, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. So. Hopefully, if that happens, our boys will stand up for me, but... You never know. Well, I'm not the only one with a gal back home. Yeah, yeah, man. It's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And, um, you're considering what to do, and Carpenter kind of walks back. You see him talking on a, a, a radio to someone, and he walks back over to you, and he's like, uh, what, what rank are you? Did you give it any thought? Uh, no, I didn't. You can just make it up, whatever. I think he's like a radio guy or whatever oh, okay. he, what that would be. Probably a like technical captain. sergeant or something. Yeah, that's fine. Sergeant, sergeant. Uh, sergeant Horvitz, uh, got to request you to come into town with me. Roger that, Lieutenant. Uh, he, uh, can you give me like a detect lies? Mm-hmm. Challenging TN14. Let's see, that's just going to be under the skill menu, right? Yeah, it'd be under your mental skills. Or social skills. So, social, mm -hmm. yeah. You are trained. Yeah, the little T's afterwards means you're trained, so you don't have to reference your character sheet. Yeah, you think he's holding something back, probably. Hey, uh, what's got you upset, Carpenter? You don't seem quite yourself. Well, you know how this day is kind of shit. Every day you shit here, Carp. <laughs> it ain't every day you learn you're going to be a POW. Yeah. That's true. But, uh, I get the feeling that you're not telling me all the truth. Maybe half of it, or dare I say, even a quarter. <sighs> Listen, man. I don't know what's going on, but I, it's got me a little... little, uh, on edge. Uh... I, I don't understand why uh, someone would be asking you for you by name. No offense, but uh, I mean HQ's asking for you. It's making me a little nervous. Something ain't right. No. Even if we're surrendering, Carpenter. I mean, the enemy ain't got a roster. They don't have a rank. And well, I mean, it ain't them. It's a, it's the general and his staff are asking for you to come into town. I. I mean, I don't think that I don't think the Nazis would be asking for you. No. I am a man of many skills, Lieutenant, but uh, I did not know that my star has risen so far. <laughs> you uh, get in the bedchamber of some Nazi general's wife or something? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> I don't think my dick works at this point. I think it's frostbit. <laughs> <laughs> He laughs. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's go. There's nothing I can do about it anyway. Just uh, keep your head on swivel. All right. Horvitz uh, 
climbs out of the foxhole and slings his rifle over his shoulder and says, You keep the house in order here while I'm gone there, Lou. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be here until tomorrow and then I'll be in shackles. Uh, I knew I was going to be in jail one way. That's what my mom said anyhow. I guess it's uh, just took uh, a long way across the ocean to, to finally get put in the pen. Hey. This battle's not over yet, man. Keep your head high. <laughs> not too high. Get a shot off, you know. Yeah. Keep your helmet on, at least. Yeah, good luck, man. And Horovitz will uh, accompany Carpenter. Yeah. You, um, head into town. Uh, Carpenter... You know, you're heading, you, you get on a jeep, and uh, he drives in relative silence uh, until you get uh, into the streets, and he pulls over into a snowbank almost, and gives you a little room to maneuver. Uh, yeah, they told me to take you here. Uh, not sure why. You look up, and it's not the, if, you know, command center where they have uh, everything. It's just kind of a random civilian home, as far as you can tell. Yeah, Horvus looks around and there are parts of the street that are covered with the rubble of bombed out buildings and uh, timber that's been splintered by artillery shells. And he kind of hops down out of the jeep and you can hear the crunch of snow under his boots. The same muck in no sense, Carpenter. Well, I told you I didn't know if it would. It's not making any sense to me either. Uh, and there? And he kind of points to one of the uh, one of the houses. Yeah, I guess. All right. Uh, Got to take you in. I'm afraid uh, to be delivered directly. Horvitz nods, and uh, he just looks over there. Anything suspicious or out of place? Uh, you can give me a perception roll. It's probably mental one, I'm saying. Yes, uh, it is under senses, yes. Trained. Um, the only thing you really notice is that, um... There seems to be a lot of foot traffic, uh, in mm -hmm. front of this building. Like, people are going in and out. Okay. Um, the shutters are closed. That's not really anything out of the ordinary. Um, I'm trying it's to. Kind of, yeah, kind of looks over, Lieutenant. Uh, looks like I'm not the only one being summoned here. I think you probably would surmise that he's not the only one. Maybe it's some special operations or whatever. I think you'd probably surmise. Yeah, maybe. You would, I don't think you have any reason to doubt Carpenter. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about it, but uh, I suppose it's possible. I hope so. Hope you're getting uh, let in on some secret mission to save our ass. Uh, wouldn't <laughs> that be the thing? Maybe that's it. Maybe it's got me all worked up for nothing. I don't know. General Horvitz <laughs> saves the battalion and Bastone. Uh, I don't know what Grace would do for that, but uh, that would keep me up for several days. <laughs> General Horvitz, yeah, that sounds mighty likely. Probably, uh, on your gravestone they'll say, Very brave, died doing the general a favor in Bastone. Hero of the One Iron First. Yeah, Mike, you will uh, go into the building. Yeah, I'm just... I was missing a... Okay, cool, got it. Alright, uh, you guys head in. You head into this uh, normal building. Um, nothing seems really. It, it's a kind of a normal uh, kind of uh, uh, house uh, interior. You walk inside. There it opens to a living room, and there's a kitchen to your left, and uh, another room to the right. A small hallway um, to uh, um, probably what you would surmise are the bedrooms and the washroom. Um, 
carpenter kind of knocks his boots off at the at the door and gets most of the snow off and just steps in and steps to the side and looks around. Hello, uh, this is Lieutenant John Carpenter, 101st Airborne. Um, was told to report here, sirs. And there's no response right away. Yeah. Lieutenant, did we uh, arrive too early? Too late? Did we uh, miss this part? I was just told to come right here. Uh, like, now, pronto. I don't know, maybe they're just not here yet. Mikey just kind of circumambulates the room and knocks on the wall. Hello? Hello? Uh, Carpenter's waiting. He kind of moves over away from the door and goes over to the uh, refrigerator, actually, and like opens it and looks inside. He's oh, man. Whew. Look at this. Milk. It's good stuff in here. Uh, Horovitz is kind of has the barrel of his gun, like uh, pushing a curtain back. He's looking out the window onto the street. <laughs> I was going to ask you if it was spoiled, if it was cold, but of course it's goddamn fucking cold. Well, it's not so bad in here, and it, it is warmed up significantly. It's not like there's no <laughs> fire going, but oh man, maybe we should we should start a fire while we wait. That won't hurt. Yeah, maybe uh, I can feel my fingertips and. Yeah. Well, I haven't felt my toes in a weeks. Why don't you get Doesn't to... Doesn't sound like a bad idea, Lieutenant. I'll go out and get to see if there's any firewood outside. You just uh, stay in here. There's like a fireplace or something? Yeah, there's a fireplace. Yeah, he kind of goes over there, and hopefully there's like a, a fire poker and stuff. Yeah, there's all, everything you would probably yeah. need. Uh, he starts to clear out the old ashes and stuff. Yeah, he kind of walks out uh, for a moment. Um, it takes probably five, ten minutes, and then the door opens again. And you kind of look over your shoulder as you're waiting for the firewood, and it is not Lieutenant Carpenter. It is a quite uh, attractive female woman with blonde hair and uh, red uh, painted lips. She smiles. Oh, this is the one. She says in a German accent far better than mine. Yeah, he uh, maybe hears her voice in the German accent before he even sees her and looks over his shoulder. Oh, shit. And his hand immediately goes to his rifle and he kind of stands up in front of the fireplace. And She puts her hands up in the air, kind of... Oh, it is all right. I am not here to harm you. Where's the lieutenant? He was told to report back to his men. Who are you? I am Ingrid Becker. Well, Miss Ingrid, you better start talking. Tell me more of your name right now. Because I'm getting a little, little frightened. And I sometimes don't act rationally when I'm frightened, when, when I'm frightened Miss Becker. Oh, I understand. Well, uh, you see, there are men outside that if you shoot me, will come and kill you instantly. But let's not speak of that. We are not going to do that, right? Everyone's going to be calm. Yeah, he kind of uses the barrel of his gun to, like, look, look, uh, take the curtains and look outside briefly. Uh, you see uh, some men outside. They are not uh, in uniform. Ah, not good. Okay. You got my ear, Miss Becker. Good. I. Uh, how do I say this? Your general has made a deal with me to save your men, all of them, from certain annihilation. It just requires your cooperation. Had there been any defectors at all? Do you know that? Uh, American defectors? No, no, German, uh, mm. German ones. It's pretty. This is like their last offensive. They were pretty desperate at this yeah, point. Yeah, you, you don't know of any. Yeah, it might not have been like craziest thing. Yeah, though, I yeah, guess. I mean, it, 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 it might. It, like, yeah, you probably heard rumors of yeah. of people crossing the line and giving themselves up. But actually, yeah. maybe not in this circumstance because you guys are totally screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before uh, then, I, yeah. 
Okay. You got strength in numbers, Becker, so... I won't do anything rash. I don't want to mess up that beautiful face of yours. She smiles slightly. Ah, good. Uh, do you think you could uh, escort me? Uh, some of my men are waiting in a, to take you to a different location. I will be along with you. As much as I would enjoy the company of a female right now, Miss Becker, you can see how that uh, doesn't particularly provide me with a feeling of safety. How about you give me a few more details about what the general has arranged? Ah, yes. Well, um, we need you to provide a service for us. And, uh, yes, that is it, really. You provide a service for us, and we let all your men go. Who's us? <laughs> well, the German army, of course. Uh, can you give me a um, a literacy roll? Literacy. It's under knowledge. You're not trained. Yeah, I'm sure not. You got it, though. There's something about her accent that's kind of weird. You've heard a lot of German, uh, although you don't speak it. You, I mean, you've caught a couple words, but mm -hmm. um, it's not a very thick German accent. It's not. There's just something off about it. You think? Yeah, he has a bit of an eye. New York, you got the Queens, the Bronx, you got people down from Long Island and Manhattan. He picks up a subtle difference, and um, perhaps there's uh, a little bit of the curiosity that killed the cat in this instance so he's willing to play along all right miss becca for now you got my uh you got my cooperation uh, good uh my men will take your rifle and uh when we go outside i think you can understand why all just so it is not why. a surprise i understand Right. Let this go, and she pushes the door open while standing there, allowing you to go first. Yeah, he does so. Yep, yeah, uh, you go outside, and the men kind of usher you towards uh, a, a jeep, another jeep. This one is kind of uh, a bit, uh, it's more like a civilian vehicle uh, than an actual uh, military jeep, though. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of nod for you to get inside. One of them reaches out and tries to take your gun if you'd let them. Yeah, I think they're all pretty much surrounded, so... Yeah, there's several of them. There's like four or five. Yeah, I think he has a little... Did he get his pistol taken away as well? Yeah, they would take yeah. away all yeah. your weapons, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. He kind of gives it to him grudgingly. <sighs> all right. You drive... um down these snowy roads um, for a while. Um, you head, you go to um, down the road and you pass a German checkpoint. Uh, they um, throw a blanket over you, um, the people in the, in the vehicle, covering up your military fatigues. They take off your helmet and just kind of toss it on the floor. Uh, she passes over some uh, documents to them, probably identification. They speak in German. You don't really know what they're saying. Uh, and uh, they let you go by, and you kind of go outside their um, blockade, if you will. Um, and you head out deeper into the woods, and you're driving for like a half an hour. I don't know if you want yeah, to Yeah, he's just thinking, you know, but... in his head, just why the hell this would happen to him in particular and uh he's the only one in this situation it's not like a team of people either so this deal's getting worse over time <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're all like they they don't speak much to you uh mm -hmm. they don't they don't generate any kind of conversation um but finally you pull up to this uh 
it's almost like it's off the road. You don't see it, hardly see any road um, mm-hmm. based on the snow, but you're heading through the, the forest. Yeah, it's yeah. deeper into the woods, and uh, finally you pull into this. Uh, it looks like there's a small hill, and you can tell, like right in front of you, there's some sort of. Uh, it almost looks like a bomb shelter from the outside. Uh, good, good. Uh, shall we go then? This is our stop. Horvitz, yeah, we'll get out of the car uh, or is escorted out. Mm-hmm. Can't quite uh, place your accent there, Miss Becca. Uh, I know it's not German, or at least completely German, but I can't imagine Swiss or Austrian. Ah, uh, yeah. Something like that. He kind of just notes mentally that she's being a little evasive. And mm-hmm. Says, okay. Where to next? Huh? The big door, of course. Come. And she gets out and opens the door for you to get out as you're in the back. If I ever see Carpenter, I'm going to give him my black eye. Knock out. All two of the teeth he's got left. Oh, I would not... Uh, I do not blame the lieutenant. He has... Uh, he had no uh, no say in the matter. Direct orders, of course. I feel all warm and fuzzy. What well, can go wrong? I'm with a German speaker out here in the middle of the woods. Where nobody knows I am. Something that looks like uh, a bomb shelter out of one of those B-real movies they show at the cinemas. Ah, uh, do not worry. Do not worry. Everything is fine. She smiles, and as she does, the door like crank crank opens as these this massive wheel, you know, uh, on the inside is spun, and. Um, man kind of whoops not that man a man uh opens the door he's dressed in uh kind of a german um uh, uniform uh can you give me a um a lore oh, actually no give me perception perception mm-hmm. oh yeah oh yeah, you notice that this, <laughs> the guy is trying to keep like the straps of the, um, I guess that would probably be for just a uh, utility belt and bandolier and stuff, uh, is he's trying to cover up some holes in the, in the uniform and there's definitely like blood splotches too. If this guy mm-hmm. was in this uniform when that happened, he would be very dead. All right. But he just steps out of the way and lets you walk down the hallway, which is this long hallway um, with this metallic ceiling and walls. Uh, it's browned and bronzed. Um, it's just probably paint. You're not sure. But the oddest thing is there's this really red, weird carpet on the ground. Very out of place. Yeah, uh, Mikey, as he walks, he almost feels bad walking on this carpet. Uh, tracking in all sort of sleet and soot from his boots. He's also kind of thinking to himself, like, hey, listen, if this was a typical SS soldier, he'd be dead if he was wearing the uniform, and if he wasn't wearing the uniform, they would never let him present himself in that fashion. So he's strangely reassured maybe <laughs> yeah right you, it's not yeah i understand what you mean yeah and actually as you're coming in one of the guys that had your guns before just kind of hands them back over to you oh uh, yeah he just checks them see if they're loaded <laughs> uh yeah they they were as you gave them yeah oh okay he kind of looks over to becker and says oh miss becker i, I thank you i was wondering if I was marching to my death here. Oh, nah. If we wanted to kill you, we would have already done it. <laughs> Why bring you all the way out here when there is a massive forest we went through? Oh, there are. There are rumors. Rumors about experiments and. We have rumors. <laughs> he just kind of continues. Ah, 
Yes, that is true. There are rumors and there are many truths to this. But that is not exactly what this is. Not exactly. She gives a smile and she actually puts a hand up on Horovitz's shoulder and kind of just almost like she's reassuring him, tapping him, kind of patting him on the back. Uh, he just uh, walks nervously and you can see his Adam's apple kind of move up and down as he swallows. Uh, so he swallows real hard. Yeah, okay, let me this other one. Oh, I kind of forgot how I rolled this guy. I forgot he was such a stud. Yep, stud so muscle McGee. Three. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Put it into play! No. Um... Um, you head out of this uh, out of this hallway into an opening. Um, uh, we will go see Commandant uh, Muller. She will tell you everything you need to know. Uh, Mikey's very reassured at this point that he still has his weapon and uh, nothing bad has happened yet. So uh, he walks uh, with a little lighter step and simply nods to Becker. She comes up and then opens this door and walks in. You can follow her. As you enter, there's uh, it's still this kind of metallical, uh, metallical, metallic um, sort of room, but there's a couch and some chairs and there's a woman seated behind a desk and Ah, Becker, good. And her accent is very similar to Becker's. It's strange. You can't place it, but it's it's clearly not exactly German, um, a German accent. She, ah, you can sit down, Horvitz. Oh, Horvitz sits down. He's feeling a little more comfortable. Uh, so he gives yeah, Muller a, a nod. Doesn't not sure what the real rank is there, Commandant. Yeah. Uh, I'm in Commandant Muller. Um, well, let us speak plainly. We need you to do something for us, um, and we hope that you will for certain reasons. Of course, Commandant. Uh, Miss Becker here has informed me of uh, at least part of the plan, but I'm afraid the details are lacking at this point. I'm reassured that you let me have my weapons. And for that, I thank you very much. But oh, we want all we want you strange. to feel comfortable, and we have we have mean you no harm. Uh, in fact, we mean quite the opposite. We want you to survive and be help to us, and us a help to you, and a help to all your GIs. Well, then you come to the right man, Mueller. Tell me more. Well. <clears throat> This may sound strange, but um, eh, things are not going to go so well for your men out there. I think you can understand why, or they could not go uh, good, and this is not us. Uh, Miss Becker probably told you that we had some sort of influence on this, but uh, very little. Uh, we needed you to come with us so we could try to get you to help us save all your friends, right? I've uh, crossed the seas and spent a lot of time with my brothers back there. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to bring them through this, Muller. Good, good. Well, <clears throat> this may seem strange, but um, uh, uh, this is uh, going to be a little... Um, well, I, how do I say this? A bit jarring? Yes. And she slides a 
a newspaper over to you. Yeah, Horvitz uh, takes the newspaper and says, Okay, I've seen one of these before, and he holds it up and starts to read. Yeah, you read it, and the thing that's weird is um, it is a newspaper from uh, Russia, but it is written in English. And, uh, yes, I... This is a... And you see the date. The date is like 1987. Mm-hmm. And it says something about uh, nuclear war. And um, she says, uh, You may not understand exactly, but uh, there is a war coming that will destroy not only America, but most the other world as well. And we would like you to help us stop it. He's already a bit jarred. Um, kind of looks at the newspaper, then back to Mueller. I, I hear what you're saying, Mueller, but uh, I don't understand what, what what I'm supposed to make of this piece of science fiction here. And he kind of throws it on the table. Uh, it is not science fiction. It is the real thing. Uh, in fact, next year, uh, August 6th, here. And she, there's a stack of papers, and she pulls one out, and she hands it to you, and it's uh, on uh, August. Uh, uh, well, let's see what's the exact date. Uh, yeah, so it's it's August 10th, and it talks about the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically from the New York Times, uh, basically how um, it forced the um, surrender of Japan, the Empire of Japan. You see, uh, nuclear war uh, starts uh, next year. And uh, eventually it will destroy everything. Yes. Horvitz has heard uh, rumors of a, some sort of super weapon. He probably have no clue what nuclear weapons are. Yeah. But we'll say that there's something in this paper that looks like really realistic, that some details that would couldn't be faked, and he starts to sway a little bit okay you're gonna have to come clean here back of you Mueller where are you from oh we are uh, well not from here um, as you seem to know uh, not even from and she her she just drops the accent not even from well, not really from this place at all. Not from Europe, not from America. Um, it is hard to describe. The Horvitz stands up and pushes back his chair. Oh, he starts slapping his face. Oh. Lewis! Lewis, the hypothermia has got me. I'm, I'm seeing things here. And he kind of uh, knocks on the wall to see if it's solid and stands up and Shuts his eyes, opens them up again. Of course, I dream of German accents and beautiful women. And he opens up, <laughs> up again, looks at, looks at Becker and Mueller. Ah, uh, I'm... Yeah, he just uh, starts to, uh, if you've ever seen a rat in a cage that's kind of, uh, doesn't know what's going on, he starts spinning his wheels yeah. a little bit. Uh, calm down, calm down. I understand it's strange. Very strange. Uh, luckily for you, the in this world, this timeline, the U.S. win the war, but uh, uh, by the time you are old and gone, uh, the world has changed again with a new enemy, and more enemies, and more enemies, until, well, <clears throat> two nations destroy the world, and... Then there will be very few humans left. And Miss Becker and I will be the remnants of those people. <laughs> Living on Mars, if you can believe it. So what you're telling me, Commandant, is... Now let me get this right. You're from the goddamn future. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, let it be known that Mikey Horovitz from the Bronx has officially gone off the fucking deep end here. 
But let's just say for one moment, I'm willing to sit my ass back down and listen to you two beautiful ladies. And if you had an opportunity to tell me exactly what to do, let's assume that I'm going to listen and let's assume that I'm going to oblige. Let's... And he sits down, exasperated. Yeah, she puts up her... Let me show you a few things. This will be strange, of course, but this is more proof of where we come from. Uh, let's see. What should I show him first? Ah, yes. Uh, she brings out a um, Polaroid uh, and slides a picture across the table. It's just some random people, but it's a color picture. Uh, this is from the 80s, I believe. Uh, Polaroid picture. Uh, this, and she brings out, uh, she tosses a um, color magazine down, uh, like a, it's a Playboy, we'll say. Uh, the Starts flipping through it. <laughs> yeah, the 90s. <clears throat> I hear that people read it for the articles. Um, what else? Uh, and, oh, here, this thing. And she drops a cell phone down, and she, like, flips it open and there's no service or anything but she like kind of sh like uh, this is used to call people it's like a radio but uh, a personal one it doesn't work right now but yeah he sees like the LED screen light up though and like clicks a few buttons and sees the cursor move around he's like holy hell Yes, this is some things oh and uh, oh Ingrid and she nods and she pulls a uh, a pistol out of uh, her um, basically behind her on a belt uh, mm -hmm. and it's very very odd looking to you and there's like a vase in the corner and she shoots it and it's like and it's, it looks like almost a flamethrower to you and this vase just melts as it's hit okay so that's what you're going to give me some weapons. I can take on the whole German army myself with those things. Uh, this is uh, unfortunately not your fight any longer. Uh, the outcome of this war is already set. Without you, Mr. Horowitz, unfortunately you um, were killed in action. No. Pretty sure I wasn't killed in action. I'm pretty sure I'm right here, Command. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, you were uh, killed in action. Uh, here, um, yes. Uh, you touch this button on the phone. Uh, it says photos. It should right, be on the photo on there. Scrolls through it. <laughs> yeah, you open it and there's a white cross and it says Michael Horovitz. 1921 to 19, uh, December 23, 1944. And uh oh no. No, 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 Commander, I got I got business business back uh back home. You just uh let me take care of that and I'll I'll do whatever you want. Let me take care of that. I got a I got a girl, I got my folks back in the Bronx, I got I got too much to live for him. Oh, I do not want you to die, Mr. Horvitz. Uh, this is why I'm giving you this opportunity, one reason. Other reasons we have found you to be suitable for such a thing. But uh, if you go back, then we will take you back to your men if you wish. Uh, you will die tomorrow. I am sorry. Well, I don't do anybody any good that way, so let's keep talking. But uh, why me? You said me. Commandant, I mean, I barely graduated fucking high school. I can... I can run fast, and I'm pretty fucking strong. And I think uh, a coach probably uh, shuffled the grades a little bit my senior year to get me through, but... Uh, some people just... Uh, well, we are from the future, Mr. Horowitz. We know what your true worth is, and we think that this could be a good opportunity for you and for us. Let us put it that way. If I explained everything, it would be, uh, well, how do you say, over your head. I know quite enough right now. To tell you the truth, what you've said so far hasn't quite sunk in yet. Yes, well. Uh, Ingrid, uh, will you take uh, Mr. Horovitz to the, um, you know. 
Shit. Yes, of course. Come, Michael. And he uh, walks behind you. Uh, I am sorry for the deception, she says. Uh, no hard feelings, Commandant. See. Can't quite rightly uh, approach somebody and say you're from the future. Please come with me. I would have put a bullet between your eyes. She nods and smiles. Uh, Becker uh, just walks with you for a while without saying anything. And eventually, uh, you could be a great hero to not only the United States, but this whole world. Our whole future. Uh, he lets that sink in a little bit. And it seems like a real possibility now that he's with these uh, time travelers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot to give up, but uh, if you, what you say is right, there's a lot to be gained too, Miss Becker. Is that even your real name? Ah, uh, no, it is not. But for now, just call me Ingrid. Okay, Ingrid. You can call me Mikey. Uh, I prefer Michael. Suit yourself. She smiles and begins walking down the hallway here. Um. <laughs> he at least takes out a cigarette. Yeah, I mean, Start whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand that. Um, you get to the edge of this hallway, and she turns the corner, and you hear uh, you hear somebody yell, and uh, an alarm, like, get hit, and then suddenly, doo -doo 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 -doo, and uh, you see the guy uh, that was uh, with you earlier uh, just fall back onto the ground in a bloody heap. Becker's like, oh no, they've come, come, hurry, hurry before they catch us. Who's they? Who? Um. Oh, why are they so big? Um. Yeah, you see these guys kind of poke out here. Um. Yeah, there's two of these. They're, they're, they almost look like German soldiers, but not quite. Um, they're wearing black, uh, red swastikas, red um, like lapels. Um, their their helmets are slightly strange, uh, and they hold these um, what only you can assume are machine guns. Um, mm -hmm. And you can you, they look, yeah, they don't look really bad. <laughs> what's that? They look dangerous, at least. Yeah, let me pull them out where you can actually see them. I forget, you probably don't have the angle I do. Um, you see I can see the name. You can see Yeah, I can see the lapels. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and let me get the initiative up here. And you can... Yeah, go ahead. Pull initiative for me. Uh, I think it... So unless there's a T, it's not trained, right? Uh, well, not on here. Uh, if you have if you have reaction, which I don't think you do, it is not trained. Okay, I'll say I'm trained. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, they're gonna go. Becker actually doesn't have stats, so she's just hanging with you. Um, so you're up first. What would you like to do? Oh, let me do this. Um, uh, oh, crap. I forgot to paste it on my abilities like having my bio. Yeah. Um, good looks. Tactical advantage. 
Oh, I should. I forgot I had that. Oh, I, th I think it's worked in actually. Um, oh, did you do untrained? And nothing exploded though, so it's okay. Yeah, it, it's 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 worked in though because you rolled five D. Yeah, so it, that worked. But uh, is she even in the initiative? No, uh -uh. she's not even in. Okay, I was going to say she could act at the same time as me. It looks like. Um, yeah. So he he kind of. Uh, turns the corner here's that pop, 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 and see Han go down and his rifle is immediately in his hand and he sees these guys um, just kind of like uh, what filtering out into the hallway yeah they're just rushing into the hallway they both have guns um, he kind of looks at this away and sees Becker obviously scared of him and so was going to try to post up on this door frame here mm -hmm. and uh, shoot the guy as soon as he comes in yeah, you can uh, move, and that would be one. So that's one AP. Um, and then, so they begin to move. Uh, one guy goes this way. He's gonna. He's not moving all that fast, so he goes five. Uh, he kind of sees you there, <clears throat> but it's at, at the last minute. This guy comes here and gets kind of cover. And you're up if you would like to. These guys are not showing their IP. Yeah. Um. If I aim and shoot, will I go before them? Yep, because they have five AP and you have one. Yep. So you could aim. You could aim like four times, honestly. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Let's just do. Uh, but I guess so actually, you times. you can aim. Uh. So you ever unless you do a rate of fire of one. You can ra you can aim technically um, three times. Yep. Let's do that. Okay. And then we'll fire at the closest one. Yep. So that'll put you at uh, four seven. Yep. Go ahead. And uh, weapons. Uh, the Garand. Yep. Let's see. You are in. Actually, you're in. Uh, what's the? Let me see what the range of your weapon is, real quick. It's, uh, uh, you're in close range, so just when you when it asks you. Uh, benefit none or yes? Uh, benefit is three for aiming okay, three times. Yep. It's been a while since I played this. Yeah. Now since Tucker. Hardship none. Additional mods none. Are you doing rate of fire of two? Oh yeah. Okay. Should I have done that on my additional on the mods? Uh, no? we'll just do a negative three to it. That's fine. Okay. Close. Oh man, that's gotta kill that guy. Uh, so fifty-five. <laughs> yeah, close range. Um, Forty-one. Thirty-eight. So 38 is uh, your total attack. Okay, total success value. And then, uh, so when you do rate of fire of two, you multiply your um, weapon damage by two. So it's 38 plus 24. <laughs> so uh, he is definitely dead. Minus three. Yeah. So. Just here. <laughs> like one bullet goes in his chest and he kind of starts to falter and the other one goes in his face and just <laughs> Red just splashed against the wall. Yeah, that one's dead. Oh, and uh, this guy's going to shoot back. Um, he's going to aim once. Uh, you have partial cover, so I'm going to give him a negative five on his shot. Yeah, so it has a semi-automatic rifle. Aimed once. Additional mod, negative five. Close range. Uh, he misses, so he shoots in it. Uh, oh, it's actually a minus eight because you got cover. Or did I do that? Uh, this is minus five. Why? Oh, that is the cover. So you should have minus eight. Yeah, he misses. It just goes doo -doo 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 all around you. Yeah, Horace just puts his hand on his helmet and. Uh, 
I guess he'd be up again, huh? Yeah, that was a terrible yeah. shot by that guy. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing for him. Yep. Uh, you can aim once to go, still go. Oh, you can aim twice and go before right, him. I'll aim twice. Mm -hmm. There, two. Hardship none. Additional mod. Uh, he has some. He's got a minus five too. And you guys are gonna take a minus eight if you're doing rate of fire so too. So just do minus eight yep. to it. Mm -hmm. Kind of shooting around corners at each other, kind of. That's close range. Yep. That is a hit. Um, so that's one uh, plus twenty four. Twenty five. Uh, minus three, so that's 22. You hit him in the leg, he doesn't have armor there, so that's 22 that kills him. How does it look? Yeah, he uh, just shoots his leg and hits the artery there, and maybe he doesn't die immediately, but goes down, can't walk, and then just narratively gets another shot in the chest. Yeah. Becca, Becca! What? Kind of looks around for her. Yeah, she's right behind you. She's like, this way! And she starts running across the. Yeah, he just uh, ejects the cartridges from his rifle and runs after her. Uh, she gets into here and waits for you. And as you kind of uh, follow her, she uh, basically takes the door, slams it shut, and then like takes one of those wheels and cranks it. Uh, we need to, we need to get down to the to the lake. Come in. He's sweating now, and uh, Becker can hear his bootsteps behind her as he kind of chases after. Yeah. You're running. There's all this clang, 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 clang as your like, feet or boots are on metal as you rush this way. She comes down this small little tiny hallway here. Are there other like, gunshots? Yeah, yeah, you, hear, yeah you hear in the background there's like... Other, you know, more shooting, more fighting, clearly. Um, she's down this way. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me, uh... A narrow hallway. Yes, narrow. And you see in this room, there's like... Uh, Kind of like vials and stuff, like kind of like uh, what you would expect to be like an a, like an experiment that you've heard the rumors about. Mm -hmm. She's like, she kind of like starts catching her breath, and she's like, oh, "We're close, we're close. I think we're okay for the moment." Ah, uh, uh, who are those guys? Uh, they, who are those guys, Ingrid? They are the ones that came back to stop us from doing just this. So at least some of the Nazis know about this uh, whole time travel thing. Uh, they are, well, they're not the Nazis you know of. They're from the future. Uh, the 22nd century. Oh, wonderful. Future Nazis. Yes. This first date keeps getting better all the time, Ingrid. Well, that is why you're here to stop them from coming back here and killing us. Do you understand? abs uh, fucking lootly and he slams another magazine to his rifle. Good. Good. Uh, let's see. Where is it? And she's like looking at all this. Uh, she goes over to the table and starts rifling through stuff looking for something. And she finds a uh, finally finds a small vial and turns around and just pops the, the stopper on it and she brings it over to you and she says, take this. Alright, alright, I'm past the point of asking questions and he chugs it down. Yeah, it doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like kind of like Alka-Seltzer. Um, you've probably had several of those after a rough night of drinking. Uh, and she's like, okay, okay, come on, let's go. And you hear, like, shooting that's getting closer and she begins to run down this way.
when you get here you see there's this like small like it almost looks like uh you don't know if it, it looks like almost like a sewer way but the water is like very clean and clear you can see down into the water and you can see that it's uh pretty deep uh, eventually you can't see the bottom and uh she's like ah, you have to jump in and you have to swim that way and she points just this down this way she's like eventually you'll come out ah, they don't have time to tell you everything that you might need to know and uh, uh, this is kind of haphazard of us anyway uh, you will learn I think what about you Ingrid I must stay here and make sure they don't catch you she takes the gun and like pulls back a like a hammer on it they're not gonna catch us I, I don't hear any more gunshots let's just let's go I cannot go you will save me here by going into the future and then in the past I I trust you perhaps I will not even have to come back here all right I got it take care of yourself Ingrid she nods and at that point you hear like this uh, kind of more like what you would expect from German but the slightly different but you hear like people speaking German and boots coming she's like hurry go go and before running and doing a headlong dive into the water he pulls Ingrid close and gives her a kiss he says that's a problem for future Mikey <laughs> and he runs and jumps in <laughs> <laughs> she like blinks and just watches you jump in and her lipstick is all like must and she turns around as guys head down the hallway um, let's uh track is too aggressive um, you jump into the water and the one thing at first you're holding your breath and uh, it's dark you're not exactly sure to go and then you realize that you can you open your mouth and no bubbles come out you're like you realize you can breathe underwater somehow yeah or if it's uh I don't know if his helmet's still there, or if it's long gone, or you tell me. But his hair, yeah, his hair was, yeah, he's kind of has it tucked underneath his left arm. You know, he's makes it easier to swim, and he just notices that he doesn't need to come up for air, and he's just thinking to himself, "What the hell?" And he looks around for any source of light. Uh, you think you see something ahead? Uh, you've been swimming for a while. Um, but it's not above you. That's all still dark, which is odd. You see something ahead of you as you're swimming. Yeah, he continues that direction. Um, his camera from beneath him can kind of see his fatigues and boots kind of flapping in the water as he mm -hmm. continues to make his way in that direction. Yeah, let me uh, switch this. Um, eventually you swim and you swim and you swim and you come out this small hole and it empties into a lake uh, you're able to see above you that there's light and when you surface you see the bank of the of the water open up into this huge green field you feel the sun on your face and the warmth of a very temperate day, 80 degrees maybe, just perfect. You see uh, the sun in the sky, um, or what you think is the sun. But it, oddly, you see kind of <laughs> something strange above you. Um, there's at least three things up there. A star, and maybe two, it's like a moon, you're not sure, but you've never seen the sky look okay. like that. Yeah, and he comes out and he's kind of standing on this grass with the breeze blowing over these green, what rippling waves of grass. Kind of, you've seen the shot in the movies as the camera pans up and he's kind of spinning around. The camera's spinning around. And he 
you see him kind of drop his helmet with his left hand and he kind of looks skyward and falls down to his knees and say, Where the hell am I at? Yeah, as you say that, the camera kind of backs up further and uh, just this view of this single man standing on the edge of this lake in this huge green field. If you got anything else, we can we can end it now. No, there might even be a little bit of a tear in his eyes. He kind of looks skyward into the heavens, and the camera kind of uh, gets farther and further away. All right, and that's it then. That is where we're going to end it.